we bring to the show Mark also Chief Economist in Global Strategies ADM Investor Services. Mark, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Uh, Mark, we saw a little bit of macro data a few seconds ago, uh, a few minutes ago, to be honest. The house price index month on 1.6%, the S&P K-Shiller home price month on 1.4%, uh, also the house price index year over year at 18.2% and 373.3%, uh, the house price index for, for January. On the other side, we're going to get the JOLS data uh, today, and I was wondering what are your expectations and what is the data suggesting for the U.S. economy? Um. Well, the problem with the house price data is that is January house price data. So um, in the meantime, mortgage rates are uh, up at the well, getting close to the peak that they saw back in 2019. Um, <clears throat> and they're not quite there yet, but you know the the uh, mortgage availability is clearly going to fall off, and demand is going to go fall off. We've certainly already seen that in terms of. Um, <clears throat> refinancing index is obviously no not many people interested at refinancing at these sort of rates um, but that leaves the consumers on the other hand also facing these high inflation pressures and I think the consumer confidence numbers today uh, that we'll get in in about 45 minutes will give, give us an idea of just how much pain is being felt by increasing um, um, inflation pressures on consumers, yes, in the US, to a certain extent, uh, wages are keeping up rather better than, say, in other countries, but they're still basically in negative, in real wage terms, negative. So that, that pressure is still very much there. Uh, some easing of uh, the tensions in Ukraine would be good, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we're actually going to get into a situation where we can look at both food and energy prices going into uh, a cyclical decline, which would obviously be a critical factor in easing out of some of the pressure on households. Uh, Mark, I was wondering, what are your expectations in regards to the jolts today? Do you think that we're going to see uh, similar numbers, similar to the previous one, or 11, 11 um job openings in the private sector? Oh, I mean, you know, we're still going to see a, a number, whether it goes up or whether it goes down. It's not going to be that far away from where it was before. And what we have is a very, very, very tight labor market. Um, and there are all sorts of factors in play here, um, above all demographics, and I think basically the demographic trends, which we were expecting to happen. The, the important thing with a lot of the trends that we've got at the moment is we aren't at some form of turning point. We are basically just seeing trends which were nascent pre-pandemic and pre uh, the, the war in Ukraine are being accelerated, resulting in you know, skill shortages showing up in the labor market, which are still partly uh, related to the pandemic, uh, <clears throat> and creating very substantial problems. And they're not just problems in the United States, um, but with the United States economy um, of being on a stronger footing and obviously not being nearly as vulnerable uh, uh, as Europe um, <clears throat> to the war in Ukraine and all the disruptions that go with it. Um, <clears throat> The momentum is quite clearly there. Uh, Mark, let me ask you, we do see positive momentum for stocks in the pre-market action. What are actually markets celebrating, in your opinion, or you would find another term to describe the current situation? Um, I think uh, relief rally is certainly um, um, what, what, a term I would use. Um, <clears throat> um, to a certain extent, the, uh, the, the falls that we're seeing in commodity prices it's not only oil prices which have come off very sharply. Wheat prices are, are basically limit down on the day. Um, <clears throat> so you know, there is uh, some hope within that. Um, but I think underlying all of this is the fact that people are still looking at uh, real interest rates and real interest rates remain deeply negative. Nevertheless, and th I think there is also an element go going on here that we are gradually going to be moving into April. We've got quarter end on the, uh, at the moment. Um, and people are looking at the expectations for Q Q1 earnings and saying maybe the bar is a little bit low on that front. 
um, and that actually earnings may prove to be rather better than people had been expecting, um, <clears throat> despite the fact that obviously the base that we've got is slightly more adverse, but it's not really the base that matters here. It's not the comparison point with Q1 last year, it's the comparison point with what people are expecting from those earnings. Nevertheless, I would also be a little bit cautious on, on, on this, simply because it is quarter end, um, <clears throat> Um, and you do start, you do often see anomalous moves, but I think the bulk of the move that we're seeing today is definitely um, related to the news that we've heard from the, the uh, negotiations between Ukraine and Russia today. Uh, yeah, we're going to discuss also Russia-Ukraine talks and what are your expectations. First of all, I was wondering um, what's your take on, 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 the, on the bond market reaction we saw major surge in Treasury yields, new fresh um, risen highs. Uh, to be uh, more precise, the 10-year Treasury is so far at 2.42, so it's down about 1.5% in this um, a few few minutes. Uh, the 30-year at, at 2.52 and the 2-year at 2.35. Um, so do you think that uh, the market is suggesting that recession might be actually coming? Um, I th well, I, I think basically that the rise in the bond yields is, base uh, is keeps on telling us that the market still thinks the Fed is behind the curve. The inversions that we've got in parts of the curve basically tell people uh, are saying that no, the Fed can't engineer a soft landing because it's too far behind the curve. Um, the fall in yields that we've seen after spiking higher earlier today is purely, uh, you know, I think it's very much, a, it's not necessarily a reaction to the news out of Ukraine, it's a reaction to the big fall that we've seen in oil prices. It basically says, okay, so some of those inflationary pressures are going to ease, but as everyone knows, we are still very much uh, quite far above where we were before the onset of hostilities. Um, your WTI is around you know, um, uh, $100.30. Yes, that's $5 off, but it's still a lot higher than it was. So those inflationary pressures aren't, you know, they, they may not be as bad as people were fearing, but they're still not going to be good. And we've still got a Fed basically just talking hawkishly, um, making people understandably entertain the idea of two consecutive 50 basis point hikes. Um, so the bond market is, is, you know, it's absolute levels, particularly in the shorter end, um, <clears throat> uh, is, is basically telling us, well, you know, we need to start pricing in a very aggressive Fed. And, you know, it's a double-edged sword in terms of uh, peace in Ukraine. You know, there might have been some caution because of the economic uncertainty related to that. Um, this, on the other hand, says, well, unless oil prices go way below where, well, certainly below the levels that we were pre the onset of hostilities, then the Fed actually in this scenario has a tight labor market, a reasonable level of growth to be looking at, um, and still has a long way to catch up to start reigning in inflation. So it gives them, to a certain extent, a freer hand um, to put their foot on the accelerator and try and rein in some of the inflation, even though I would add, obviously, they can't really do much about you know, the, the supply chain disruptions that we've got. And there isn't really anything they can do about food and energy inflation either. Right. Um, and final take, Mark, face-to-face -face talks between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, Russian and Ukrainian delegates um, are continuing in Istanbul today. Uh, are you expecting some positive outcomes? Because yesterday we saw a little bit of scary reporting of the WHJ, Roman Abramovich, who is, by the way, over there uh, participating in the talks. Uh, and Ukraine peace negotiators suffer suspected poisoning. Um, so if we are reading that kind of news, it means that probably Russia is not so serious in, in, in peace talks. Uh, what's your interpretation of the situation and what are your expectations? Well, I think we have to be realistic. All Russia is committed to doing at the moment is de-escalating some of its military activity uh, around Kiev um, and Chernyiv. Um, the war, as per se, is still raging in the Donbass region. Um, you know, the fact of the matter is one of Russia's clearly stated ambitions is to take that region over, which remains a very, very high hurdle because Ukraine has said categorically and very understandably that territorial integrity has to be recognized 
as part of any um, peace agreement. So we're a long, long way from anything which basically says we're getting a full ceasefire. And beyond that, I think people also need to remember, because of what's already happened, um, because there have been atrocities committed, because of, of the carpet bombing of so many Ukrainian cities, you know, the idea that we're going to start rolling back some of the sanctions which are there, and clearly the most disruptive part in terms of the global economy, um, you know, we're still a, a, a country mile away from that, and that needs to be borne in mind, even if there is a certain sense of relief that things aren't getting that much worse. Thank you very much, as always. Mark, also Chief Economist and Global Strategies, ADM Investor Services. Have a great day, Mark, and um, talk to you soon. Yes, absolutely.